Jubiest of the Tubiest, the best YouTube subscribers on the planet that you. And I'm 50 plus. Today, um, I'm going to show you guys my first cook with my La Hachina pig smoker, okay? Um, the video is kind of long because I'm showing you uh, uh, several things. Excuse me. I had something jack on my face there. Anyways, uh, I have several things going on. Um, the uh, uh, temperature reader, which is the uh, uh, thermal work smoke. Um, the pistol smoker that adds smoke to the to the meat in that uh, uh china and uh the rotisseries i put on the on, on as an accessory on the cooker um some things worked out well on the first cook and some things did not the uh the uh pistol smoker uh i think it, it would have worked a lot better than it did However, um, next time I get ready to, to use it, I'm going to get it started first before I put the pig in so that I can uh, uh, make sure that the little spigot is, is clear and that it's actually uh, smoking pretty good. Okay, I didn't do it that way. Um, I actually put the pig in first, then got the smoker going, and I kind of have to peek inside, kind of lift the pig up and uh, the lid up and look in there. And I mean, that thing is hot. So I didn't really get to, to uh, make sure that it was working uh, the way it should. So I can't blame that semi-failure on the on the pistol smoker, but uh, more of, of me not doing it properly or in the right order uh, from you no know, experience. You know, it's my first time doing it, so next time I'm going to do that a little different. Uh, the rotisserie was an epic fail. Uh, I ended up taking the uh, chickens off and uh, um, finish it in the oven because it, I didn't it wasn't turning right you know I had it off and I, was put, I put two of them on there back to back and then they it was just not it was not good so uh, but I did learn some things about the uh, the rotisserie and next time I do it uh, I'll do it different and, and and I know it'll work uh, a different way I just um, one I think it was too much weight and two the chickens they uh, began to uh, they were dirt I had them butted up like this with the little prongs on each end and and, and that didn't work well uh, they started kind of moving around and making space between them and it was just not good the uh, the second row the second rotisserie is two rotisseries on there and the second rotisserie had a uh, beef uh, roast on it and that one did turn out pretty good um, I think I had it a little too far away from the flame or, or from the coals and so uh, you know I, did, I ended up taking it off too and finishing it off in the oven so uh, those two things uh, the uh, the pistol smoker and the rotisserie we're going to give them a different uh, a different world however the uh, the thermal work smoke that I used and mine only has one probe um, I, got, I did the single probe one um, they're like 99 bucks uh, I would highly advise you guys if you're gonna do the thermal work smoke uh, Buy the one with the uh, with the four probes. One is going to take the internal temperature of the the, uh, the box, and then you can put the other probes in different portions of the meat so that you can monitor um, when the, when the meat's ready. So the idea was to take the one I had and stick it in the uh, in the ham, which is the thickest part of the of the of the uh, of the big of course and then the other probe is just tell me what the temperature of the box was like it worked out really well okay secondly um, 
you have to keep adding coals to the top of the smoker, maybe the cooker, okay, with the, with the pig in there. Uh, I started with one 20 pound bag on the top and it took, oh, probably half of the cook time before I had to add uh, half of another bag on there. And then uh, towards the end, I added the second bag. Um, um, right when the the uh, the ham reached 180 degrees, okay. Once it reached 180 degrees, it was time to flip it over so you can uh, uh, get the uh, skin uh, crisp. Uh, and uh, when I took that off, you guys gonna see me take it off and and, uh, and uh, take care of the skin so I can get it crisp. And so it's off for a little while, and of course the heat comes out. And so when you put it back on, you get to rebuild that heat again. And at this point, I gotta tell you guys, it's a step that I missed. And because I didn't do it, I can tell you the result of it. Um, there's a tray and then a, a, a tray, which is a, basically an ash pan. And then the mesh part where the coals go on top of it sits on top of the ash pan. And what I did not do was to pick the, uh, separate them and then shake it so I can get the, uh, the ash to fall into the ashtray and then empty the ashtray set the coals mesh plate back on you know put it back like it's supposed to be then add your extra coals if you do not it was what i noticed that my temperature wouldn't get back up and that's because all that ash will act, act like an insulator and won't let the heat convect down into the box so uh you guys didn't see me do that um, and I, I realized that after I couldn't get the I, I noticed that the temperature in the box wasn't going back up and that's where those thermal uh, products uh, <clears throat> did a fantastic job for me because I just I was in my house I could just look at the uh, the little handheld monitor and I can see what the what the pits doing and what the pigs doing and I could see that it was not building up heat okay in the box and then I realized that's what I, I needed to do. And then uh, so I went and done that and it worked out really well. Um, but uh, overall it was, a, it was a success and uh, the, the pig was, was really good. I enjoyed it, my family enjoyed it. Um, you know, I bought a 40 pound pig and uh, roughly 12 people laid off of it and everybody took some home so it worked out really good um so you're gonna watch me go through that process and towards the at the end of it after i crossed it out i took it and put it on the table i just took the solution pictures of it and uh and that's it so but it did work out really well i was happy with it and i hope that you guys uh, can get something out of this video until i see you again thanks for watching it and here's your boop really early. <laughs>
okay? So uh, basically this is all you need. Oh, by the way, and a piece of hard candy there to, to give yourself a treat once you're done. So let's get going. Okay guys, this is the, the one I installed while uh, you guys weren't watching. You're gonna watch me pretty much put the other one on. And this is so, so, so very simple. I mean, difficulty on this is like, you know, one to 10. It'll be like a minus four or something. I mean, really, really, really basic. See the little screws in there? So we're gonna drill the holes to put those in. So we're gonna position that thing first. So from the end, we are 10 inches over and as you can see there, three and a half inches from the top, okay? Again, we are 10 inches from the corner and we are about three and a half from the top. So I'm gonna position that and then I'm gonna drill the holes on that side and I will install the holder. You do that on both sides. This is so simple, guys, so simple. All right, one side's installed. One thing that I do want to show you is I cheated a little bit and see, I put my little, my level on there. I just want to make sure that the, I'm on the same page with both sides and that I'm even. In the instruction manual, it'll tell you which, what size of holes to drill. And it also has a little template in there too, by the way. It has a template that, that helps you to do this without screwing it up. See those two holes right there? When you drill those holes, those are pilot holes for screws to go in. Uh, this this deal, see, it's a uh, outer sheet and then an outer sheet, uh, inner sheet and then this thin piece of like uh, plywood in the middle. You only want to drill through the outside and into that wood. You don't want to go through all the way through to the inside of the box, okay? Those are just pilot holes to put the screws in there and get her done. One second. All right, now it's installed on both sides, one on each side, just like that one, okay? The next is this, the rod holders, okay? Look, the rod holders has this little uh, stopper right there. That way you can adjust the height of this, how far you want it away from the top where the charcoals are gonna be. Okay, and so that's gonna be adjustable and they're gonna give you a little Allen wrench, okay? So here's my tip to you. On this side, on my little deal, I drilled a hole in there. So it'll hold my Allen wrench, that way the Allen wrench will always be with this box, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing there so that the, uh, it'll, the, uh, the one for the second spit, uh, will will always be with the box. You don't have to worry about losing it or, uh, you know, having to go find it when you want to make the adjustments, okay? Just a tip. So the rest of this is going to be real simple. Let me let me uh, put the rest of it together for the, the other one. There's the second one right there. And I'll get right back with you. All right. Super simple, guys. Super simple. Just like the last one. You know, really easy. This side, of course, holds the, the box, the, the actual the actual deal spits it, and it's got little slots right there. They just slip right over that. Just like that. The little hole, peekaboo, right in there. It's for your, your spit to go through. I mean, this thing is so basic, so basic. By the way, I will give you one tip. So I'm putting this thing in there. One tip. One end's flat, one end's pointed like that. Of course, the pointed end does not go into that box. Don't put that pointed end into the box. Okay? And you're basically done. Um, I haven't used this thing yet. And 
of course those are the spits that go in there that one has the spits on there already what uh one concern to me is when this thing is spinning is it going to work its way out of this little corner and if so what i'm going to do is get some uh hose clamps and a washer stick the uh washer here and then the hose clamp here so that it can't go this way you follow me I don't know that that's going to be an issue, but if that's what's going to need to happen, then I'll, I'll do that. But uh, rotisserie installation on my roasting box, La Chahina, China, however you pronounce it. But it's going to get a pig in it today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Okay, <clears throat> what we're going to have to do is open this hog up it's going to have to be flat belly up uh, and so in order to get that done we're going to have to split it right down its spine it's got a pelvic bone right here we're going to cut through that so uh, T is going to put a little bit of pressure you don't have to put a whole lot because we don't want to tear the meat away from the bone we, our, our object is to split the bone so that it kind of lays itself out once you get to the chest this part, you're gonna to have to cut through that. We're gonna cut through that with a, with a little bone saw, okay? So, there's lots of different ways to get this done. We're gonna use the, the hatchet way. You just lay the hatchet where you want it, and then sledge it, just like that. See, and you see this it went right through that pelvic bone. And then we'll, we'll start with the spine. Now, T, you're gonna hold it. I'll straddle our little box here, and we'll get going. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna open up this chest cavity. Just take a little saw here. And by the way, the, the, the throat goes through here, okay? And my finger's in the, in the esophagus hole, and that's where you want to cut through here, all the way to the, the chest cavity, all right? So, just go in here, keep it, keep it tight, pull it tight. We're gonna start cutting through it. First, uh, come on. all right, so now I'm exposed, okay? We're exposed, so now we just cut right through it. See how easy that was? Super duper simple, and now we can get inside. Right, yeah, yep. See inside of there? As you can see, this is it's there, but what's holding it is where the the rib cage is at the top, where it meets the spine. You're gonna have to cut on both sides so this thing will lay open. Then we'll finish our cut. Okay. All right. So you can take it off. Okay, guys. This is for for some. This may look a little gross. Okay, but little these little deals like this you want to cut up clean this out basically you want to clean this stuff up things like these you want to get those out because some of those are glands okay and glands absolutely does not taste good okay get those out and this skin right here this skin is boot leather tough you you don't want to eat that and it does come off fairly easily okay you see that we want to take all of this out on both sides that's the ribs this is uh the uh this is a membrane but in the uh the most common language for that is silver skin you don't want you, you don't want that on your meat plus we're going to rub all this area down with seasonings and the seasonings will not penetrate that membrane. That membrane is there to protect the, the, the skin and the muscle underneath. Uh, that's what its job is and it's going to do it very well. Uh, and it's going to prevent your seasonings. See that? 
you know, just peel it off. It's gonna prevent your seasonings from penetrating the meat and uh, that won't be a good thing. That's it. Okay, okay everybody. Uh, I know that my head's cut off here, but that's fine because I'm not the feature here. This is the feature. This is what you guys are, are logged on to see. So please ignore the fact that my head's gone. Um, this is what this part, the next part is, is about, okay? I'm going to, as you can see, I'm gonna use this uh, marinade, uh, injection marinade. Um, you use whatever marinade you like, okay? Whatever injectable, injectable, marinade that you like use it now typically i wouldn't use this one um, i have my own little recipe that i like to inject with but this is for you guys if you're first cook and this you can purchase in in just about any grocery store uh this tony saturies is really good i like the a butter uh, uh butter garlic uh style and uh, it's gonna work out really well for you. It's, it won't, because um, after we inject it, we're gonna put rubs on it, okay? And you're gonna use whatever rub you like. And uh, and this blend of injection won't uh, clash with the flavors of your rub uh, because it's pretty generic. And which is the reason why I'm using this one, okay? So, uh, plus it comes with its own injection needle in it. Um, very, very simple to use. Okay, guys, we're ready now. Um, I poured my marinade in the cup and rinsed out my injector. Just fill it up. These hams, these hams are where the where your meat's gonna, your flavor's gonna be. Let's start there. Be very generous with it. Try to use as much as you can in those hams. You cannot overdo it. So don't think that you will. You're not overdoing it. Keep it going. Um, remember the underneath with that injection. So you're gonna put a lot back in these hams because you need to get that seasoning and injection underneath. Be very careful to not coat through the skin at the bottom, okay? That is crucial. Be very careful. Do not poke through that skin. As you can see, there's a lot of marinade that I'm putting into these hams back there. This is a 40 pound haul and I will probably go through three bottles of this marinade. Three, three of these bottles for a 40 pound hog. I'm gonna almost get one bottle in one hand. You're not gonna overdo it, okay? You're not. Just, uh, just have no regrets that you wish you had to put more, okay? So just try to put as much in there as you can get. It's all, I wish you could, this camera's not gonna show this very well, but you can see how this swole up in comparison to this one, because that is just full of this marinade. And we're almost at the bottom of my cup, and pour the rest of it in there. And one bottle is gone. I'm only, I'm about here in this cup. I might be able to fill this up maybe three more times. Starting to ooze out in other sides of it. So that means it's getting full. Once it gets full, I'll stop 
Uh, yeah, it's squirting me back now. I'll try to get one more here. See, I'm starting to come out right there. Starting to come out. As I am getting that ham pretty full now. These are your tenderloins, by the way. And they won't need much flavoring, but you can see it puff up when I got under there. Look at that. Get up in there. Get up in there. See, see that puffs up when you inject it in. All right. I'm going to finish injecting the ham. Uh, and by the way, these ribs, I bet the whole rack of ribs it, isn't enough pork to make one pulled pork sandwich in both sides. This is a 40, it was 42 pounds, okay? And so this is going to be pretty, pretty decent eating for, um, you know, 20 people or so. But these rib meat is not where it's at. It's the hams, the shoulders, the jowls in here, and then uh, uh, a little bit of the uh, meat underneath the ribs, okay? So that's where you want that marinade to go. That's where you want those injections to go. So the hams, concentrate on the hams, concentrate on the shoulders. Also, um, I trimmed away some of the skin and then easy, you see how to make this pocket on here? And that's because I'm gonna put my dry rubs underneath those these pockets right here, underneath the skin. I'm gonna shove the rub in there good so that uh, the meat, the hams can actually get some of that rub on them as well, okay? But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video here. I'll get back with you guys. I'm gonna finish the rest of this, the uh, the injection process, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, everybody. Our hog, as you can tell, has been rubbed down really, really well with the rub. Get get it all over that skin really good. And a, a good idea is to also spray your hog skin with some. Uh, vegetable oil, uh, peanut oil, whatever you, can, whatever you like, and spray can, it's the easiest that way. And then uh, it'll help that rub to stick to the skin. Be generous with your seasoning so that it'll have time to, uh, or, or, or there's enough seasoning for it to uh, work its way into that meat as well while it's inside that roaster going at it. And now it's time to rack up our hog. Let me go get the rack and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it all racked up and ready to get on our pit. All right, family and friends. Here's our racks, okay? This way at the top, this way at the bottom. That's how this thing fits, okay? So, just gonna slip it under it. hooks go in one rack and attaches to the other one just like that okay do the same thing to the other side pretty easy I say pretty easy and then I set those hooks down to make this happen Please put that there. Pretty easy there. One more this side. And get in there. Look at the bottom. Squeeze right over the top. Done. Done. Um, 
I will say my cooker is a 100 pound hog cooker. This is a 40 pound hog, so um, I might be making it look really easy because the equipment that I'm working with is, is designed for a larger hog. So um, I'm just hoping that this will work out the same way for you guys. It's time now to get our, our pit ready. All right, everybody, it's time to get the fire going, okay? These are two uh, Omaha Joes. They hold quite a bit of charcoal. I really, uh, uh, I really was impressed with the size. I mean, I just purchased them, and of course, they're brand new. It hadn't even been used yet. So we're gonna. Uh, I use these little uh, starters. See there inside of there, and then uh, you know, get my little lighter get them going that one's going see there they're both going off there and i got another one i'm gonna put right right here and uh this takes three of those for a 20 pound bag, three of them for a 20 pound bag to get this started. And we're gonna need, we're gonna need all, or one full bag uh, to get this uh, pig started, okay? So let's get get this uh, cold rolling and uh, I'll get back with you when it's time to uh, spread the coals out. Um, we also have our smoker on the side right there and the, the head is here and i think next time i'm going to spin the the uh the hog and put the and put the the hams closest to our our smoker okay but we'll we'll get to that in just a little bit <clears throat> that is working out really well they're getting that getting those coals started there Coals going, all of them are smoking good. I expect them to be lit off fairly quickly, and we should be on the way. This is the the thermal works smoke. Okay, this is what we're going to use to monitor the temperature of the meat. Let us know when it's once we cover this hog. Um, Let's take a look at it. Once we cover this hog, we don't want to uncover it. So the only way you're gonna know that it's ready is, is these temperature pros. One is in the ham. Let me know when that ham is ready. And then the, I got another one in here that lets me know what the temperature of the cabin is, okay? What the cookhouse is, all right? One here, one here. That Thermaworks also has a product, a smoke that has uh, four probes one here and then you can put another one here one in the shoulders but uh mine only has the one and i believe it should be just fine for this cook let's seal it up and go to the next step all right guys this is the thermal work smoke the top one is the ambient the bottom one is in the meat. We're gonna set the alarms to let us know when that ham reaches its proper temperature. When it does, we're gonna uh, open, a, open a box, flip it, so that we can then crust the skin, okay? This one is the one we will keep uh, with us, okay? It's got a little tether and uh it stays inside the other one stays with the uh, near the box of course these boxes are aluminum but the thermal works uh has a little magnet on the back of it but uh since this is aluminum of course it won't it won't stick to it so we're just gonna let it sit down there that's fine we're gonna use this inside the house this is what we're gonna use to monitor the cook all right I went ahead and dumped our coals. You see my, these Omaha Joes, 
Got two of those, and then that's the one that I've had always been using. And they're good for about eh, six months, and then, you know, and I use them quite a bit, but uh, there's a lot larger, as you can tell. I will be purchasing another one. So that I have three. Three will, will certainly hold one 20 pound bag of charcoal. And I like to start them with those little starters. And in those, instead of, you know, you see people put their, their coals on top here and then squeeze the uh, lighter fluid and light them with the lighter fluid. And I just prefer to do it this way. But anyways, uh, you know, get them started in those and then pour the coals out. Um, the black coals there that had, of course, been lit, those were the few remaining coals, charcoals, that was in the bag that I didn't try to fit into the little starters, okay? And let me tell you something. If you guys don't believe this thing is hot, holy cow, that's some heat coming off of this freaking thing, bro. Inside, it's already at 184 degrees inside, and the ham is at 74 degrees. Needs to, the ham needs to get up somewhere around 180, okay? And then it'll be done. So um, we're gonna let that get going. In the meantime, let's work on getting our smoker started, okay? We'll get on that one. There it is. Good shape. Looks really good. This. There's a temperature probe and it's it's at 180 right now. So it's time to uh it's time to flip it. Okay, now uh what what what's gonna happen is these juices right here in the cavity, that juice, we're gonna try to get into those pans. Got three pans underneath to catch that juice. That's the goodness right there. We're gonna, we wanna keep that. So um we're gonna flip it and uh Get right back with you guys. We got it flipped. Now, the only thing we need to do is crust, crisp up the skin. It's gonna start raining on us in a minute. To crisp up the skin, what we're gonna do is cut it like this. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna make these X's. The reason we're doing that is so that the fat underneath can render out. See it? See the fat right here? It's gonna render out that juice right there. If it doesn't render out, the skin will not be able to crisp. So we have to do this. Tickle, tickle. Perfection. That's good. All right, so we're done with that part. Now we're gonna put the lid back on. It's gonna take about 45 minutes for that skin to crisp and, uh, and our hull will be complete. I'm gonna go ahead and put our, our probe back in. It's uh, well, just gonna take it a minute to get back right again. All the heat's out of it now. So let's go ahead on and put our lid back on it and we're done. 